Welcome to episode 20 of Ask the Grounding Experts, where our experts from ENS Grounding Solutions answer your engineering questions about the world of grounding and earthing. Today, our world-renowned grounding expert, David Stocken, discusses the grounding challenges at solar farms. The sun is shining on you, David. Yeah, solar farms have a lot of grounding challenges at them. Uh, they're very big and massive. Uh, uh, they've got some very expensive equipment in some areas, and in other areas, not so much. Uh, today, we're seeing a lot of changes in the solar industry where we're getting uh, battery storage solutions in those. We'll talk about those in a, a, another day. Uh, the challenges of the battery uh, storage systems that are being tied to solar farms. But in the most part you have a, a solar farms that are made up of one of a couple of different ways. One, you have a series of arrays of these panels that are taking the energy from the sun and converting it into electricity. And either they come down a long run straight into an inverter or they enter into a combiner box and that combiner box sends them to an inverter. Um, you see them for various different reasons. The very large farms that are in the 25 megawatts tend to have the combiner boxes. Smaller farms tend to send them down to inverters. Uh, we're seeing changes all over the place, but bottom line, the intent of grounding of these things is, is the same, particularly when it comes to lightning protection of these uh, systems. So the general idea is it's too expensive to throw Franklin-style lightning protection system across all these arrays. So losing a few arrays, you know, 20 arrays to a lightning strike isn't a big deal. Uh, it's cost money, of course, but it's not the end of the world. You know, these arrays, the cost per array has come down. If you lose a few dozen arrays, not the end of the world. You go out and you replace them. But if you start losing hundreds of arrays, this becomes a problem and then the costs really start adding up. So generally speaking, we try to start protection at the combiner boxes. If you're running into straight into a smaller inverter and you're using a series of small inverters, then we try to start the protection there as well. But the same basic principle applies. We're gonna have some sort of surge protection device tied to the incoming DC lines off of those arrays. If that surge protection device cannot function properly and dump that current down into the earthing system, the grounding system, you're going to get a back feed and it's going to start blowing stuff up. and It's going to start blowing up more arrays and that's going to start costing more money. So starting at the combiner boxes or if you're at the smaller arrays, we want to have a nice surge protection device that goes immediately down to a dedicated grounding electrode. Now it's also tied to the footings. You've got tons of footings that are pilings that are holding these arrays up into the air. But often those array, those, those uh, steel pilings, uh, are often coated with some sort of protection for corrosion reasons and that protection for corrosion is often not very conductive. So sometimes it's a tar, it's some sort of other sort of protection, but it can prevent current from wanting to flow down it as being used as an effective electrode. So it's very important that at those combiner boxes and at those uh, inverters we actually have a real true grounding electrode to tie those in. Now one ground rod is not enough to handle an entire lightning strike, not even remotely close. In fact, a single ground rod will only handle somewhere around 200 amps. That's about it depending on your soil, somewhere between 100 to 500, but good, good rule of thumb is around 200 amps. So we want to make sure that that combiner box has a direct line and ties below grade to the next combiner box, to the next combiner box, to the next combiner box and ties all those together so that if combiner box A gets hit by lightning, it can share the electrode that you've already paid for and installed in all the other combiner boxes. Same thing if you're using a smaller uh, inverter system. You want all of those inverters tied below grade so that they can share each other's grounding electrodes and split that current across multiple electrodes. That's the goal when we're dealing with, with anytime we know we're going to have a high energy event, we want to divide and conquer. 
That's what we do at substations. That's what we, what we do with lightning protection systems. And you want to do the exact same thing at your solar farm. When that energy comes down from the arrays and hits your combiner box or your inverter, you want to make sure it goes through the surge protection device straight down into a, a very effective grounding electrode system that can handle the amount of current. Remember, a lightning strike can have hundreds of thousands of amps. So you want to divide, 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 divide that current up and get them down electrodes in a way so that you don't destroy your inverters. Now, the other side of this comes in what the value of a fence grounding system. So oftentimes um, we have our, our solar uh, farms are power generators and they fall under the NESC and the NESC has made this very clear that your power generation plant falls under the same rules of IEEE standard 80 and any other power generator and your fence must be grounded and it must be calculated for step and touch analysis etc. So the best electrode system you have is in fact the outside fence. So if you make sure that your ground electrode gets tied all the way out to the fence ground ring, any lightning energy that hits your array it's going to prefer to go out to the fence because that's the biggest ground electrode you have. If you're, all your inverters are on the inside of, the, uh, of your uh, fence line and the, you have a ground loop on the outside of your fence line, well, most of the current's going to want to go out and away from your inverter protecting them. It's the biggest electrode you have is your fence. And if you have it properly grounded, all, most of the current will go out and away from your expensive equipment. And that's exactly what we want to see. So your arrays may get hit, and you may lose a few dozen of them, but if it's properly grounded, that current will travel out towards the fence ground loop and away from your expensive inverters uh, on the inside. And that's the, exactly the goal of a good grounding system, is high reliability to protect that expensive equipment, maintain that uptime, minimal damage will occur, so it's affordable, replaceable, and when you have a good system and you've tied up a good LRA, lightning risk assessment, in alignment with a good grounding system, uh, you can submit that and keep your insurance costs down and uh, hopefully not spend uh, all your profits uh, insuring your equipment in the, in the long term plus. Um, you know, uh, I like to have the power on, so we, I would personally appreciate it if you uh, make sure that your uh, power supply for our country is, uh, and everyone's country, is solid and reliable, especially during storms when we need that power the most. Uh, of course, in a solar farm, when, uh, when the storm is hitting, I guess you're probably not getting too much power out of it, but uh, hence why we're doing battery uh, 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 storage solutions now. Uh, which we'll talk about those risks when it comes to lightning in another episode down the road if you guys all uh, would like to hear uh, uh, that in the future. Okay, thanks a lot. Send us uh, uh, any questions you have, but that should wrap us up today for some of the challenges that uh, solar farms face uh, in grounding and earthing. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this episode helpful, please give us a quick like down below and subscribe to stay up to date on future educational videos we will be publishing. And feel free to post questions or comments below as well. We might even feature your questions in future videos. If you'd like to learn more about the amazing world of electrical engineering and grounding, be sure to check out our certified online courses at the links in the description below to kickstart your career. See you next time.